Hello, I'm going to show you how I mix loud at the moment. Uh, this is my general process and workflow. It's kind of like high-ish level, but you should be able to apply it and hopefully mix loud as well. I'm using Studio One Six. You can use any software for this. The plugins that I'm using are third party, but you could use stock plugins. You could use other third party plugins. These principles should apply pretty globally to anything. My name's Nick Rollo. I'm a producer and mixing engineer from Australia. If you find this video helpful, consider liking, subscribing, and turning on the notification bell. It helps me out quite a lot. If you use Studio One, there's a link in the description to a few free products I've made for Studio One. These are presets. There's a synth or two there. It's all free. You can pay what you want, but it is free. So if you're interested in that, Go check it out. If you're an artist interested in production or mixing, feel free to contact me. My email is below, my website's below. You can contact me through either of those. Let's get into the video. All right, so the song that I'm working on is for my instrumental lo-fi project called Incognito Mode. You can go stream my music on all platforms. This song will be out on the 7th of July. And this is what it sounds like. So this one's a kind of weird hybrid between the pop music that I produce for other people, the lo-fi music I produce for myself, and also my desires to make like cinematic music for movies, TV shows, and games. I don't know. It's in that pocket somewhere. I don't know what to call it, but I think it's cool. So the process of making something loud is kind of a systematic approach to mixing. The way that I personally like to run is on my limiter. So it's top-down mixing, I guess. I'm starting with the end in mind and then I'm kind of mixing into my mix bus chain. I'm using the Pro-L limiter by FabFilter. My goal is pretty much at a peak, I want the kick basically to be pulsing at about minus 5 dB in gain reduction. So somewhere between kind of minus 4 and minus 6 basically. So when it kicks, I want that to be the punch and I want it to hit about minus 5 it's probably not like an ultra, I mean, I, I don't even know. I'm not sure if this is an ultra known technique. I don't know if it's an ultra used technique, but I just find when I do this, it sounds pretty good. It's really loud and it's just an easy approach. So I'll now play it and I'll show you what, what's happening. And also keep in mind the luffs on the right side. So it's pretty loud. I mean, minus seven luffs, that's not bad. It's not really cranking too hard either. As you can see, there's a few stray peaks happening. Sometimes it goes down to six. I could probably catch those with a clipper to just clip off those, those tops, but I'm not too bothered by it, to be honest. And this was a pretty fast job. I wasn't thinking too hard about it. Alas, my process is this. So when I'm mixing it, I'm going into the limiter. Once I've got the level, I'll start cranking up the limiter and I'm kind of just like watching it, trying to make sure that it's not going too hard. The key is just how you think about things like saturation and compression, basically. So if I compress the kick harder, it means I can push the overall loudness harder. I just said harder twice, I think. I, I will lose transient. So if I, if I compress the kick too much, I won't get the punch of it, but I'll be able to push everything louder. So that's the trade-off, basically. We look at the kick now. So I'm taking off about 2 dB on the kick right now on this compressor. I've also got this tape going, which is going to be also taking off more. 
about another 2 dB. And then I'm also going into my mix bus, which also has another compressor. So this is also taking off like another dB basically on the kick pretty much. So it's a lot of different stages of compression. And I think it's hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be easy to see when I take these, when I take the processing off the drum bus, this should change. Okay, that didn't actually show it as well as possible because <laughs> I think I'm adding a lot of level to it. Let's just try the compressor. Okay, so we can see it there. It's starting to tame it a little bit. I also am taking a bit more of the, the mix bus with this additional tape. Just a dB. So the tape's actually doing quite a tremendous amount of lifting on, on the mix bus for the overall sound of things. I feel like I'm not explaining this as well as I'd like to. Basically, the concept is this. When I'm mixing, I'm going into a limiter. I'm trying to hit minus five. If the kick is too loud, I can turn it down kind of watching what's happening. Like If the kick is cranking, and I'll try to demonstrate this, it's going to make it hard for me to push to that minus five uh, gain reduction point without just like crazy differences between how loud the kick is and how loud the rest of the track is there'll be this it won't it won't be as aligned as i'd like it to be which means that i either have to turn down my kick or i have to compress my kick or do some kind of transient reduction basically uh so i'll try to demonstrate this <laughs> so i'm gonna crank my kick by plus six This is a bad example because it's getting compressed so much. Let's try this. So clearly the kick is now cranking a bit hard. It doesn't sound as good and it's just, yeah, it's not quite working as well as I'd like. So I either turn down the kick to get it into that balance or I compress it more. So first off, probably smart to just turn it down. So obviously what's kind of happening is we're losing a bit of the craziness of the kick. It's getting a bit more tamed and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing depending on what you want. But yeah, it's just this process of taming basically. All right. So after a little bit of thinking about it, I suspect I might have to make a follow up to this video. Think of the limiter. The limiter is obviously doing gain reduction. We have a ceiling. It's pressing into the ceiling. If it pushes too hard past the ceiling, it gets reduced right that that's what gain reduction is basically if the limiter is kind of the final piece of the puzzle all of the things beforehand are kind of trying to take a bit of pressure off the limiter i'm compressing to help make the limiter's job just a bit easier because then i'm going to start getting a little bit less of like the, the distortion that happens when it limits too hard and consequently if i do it right it also means i can push the limiter harder so it's Almost like it's less work for the limiter and I get to push it harder. So I get a louder track. I think that is kind of the concept I'm trying to <laughs> show here. I hope this has been helpful. I really fear that it's been a little bit confusing, but that's the takeaway. It's think of compression as the means to the end of making things louder by reducing energy. You don't want to do too much compression because then you'll lose all the fun. You'll lose all of the punch. But if you do it just enough, it means you can kind of find that balance between transients and volume. <sighs> I'm so not like qualified to talk about these things, but that's my process. So if you found it helpful, like and subscribe. <laughs>